Carl CDC and today I have a bit of an unboxing. It's not uh, a gigantic unboxing. It's what's in here and uh, Yeah, so I've been reviewing for a while and every now and then people come up to me and ask if uh, I'd be willing to review their stuff a lot of the times I say no um, Just because I, I I see the stuff and I don't you know find it interesting and I don't think people will watch the review uh, but sometimes people uh, do some stuff uh, and I find it int intriguing, interesting, and I think that mm, the viewers of the channel, you guys, would also find it interesting. So, yeah. Um, I also brought some interesting pieces here today so we can look at them. And we're also going to uh, do some updates on the channel. Uh, so I'm getting back into reviews. I'm getting back into reviews. Knives. I haven't reviewed, like, current knife um, in a while. My last review was of like a case and Duke Kaiser, which is uh, not, um, it's discontinued. So, you know, I, but I'm getting back into uh, reviewing um, current, more important knives. And yeah, that's been great. <clears throat> so as soon as we get, you know, a little bit more people, we'll do, we'll start the unboxing and I'll let you guys know who's it from and... Yeah, can we start using this stuff so I can review it? Um, reviewing for me is part of the hobby of, of collecting stuff for EDC. Um, I, I do a lot, you know, uh, I have a full-time job, of uh, uh, a marriage, a family, not, not kids, but, you know, family. Uh, I like running, cycling. Uh, I like the outdoors. It's a Gorman um, instinct. It's like an outdoor ABS watch, count stepper, GPS, Galileo, all that kind of stuff. And I like gear, and I like reviewing gear. Like I, when it comes in, I can't wait to use it. I can't wait to see if I like it. And I can't wait to review it. It's just a uh, part of the hobby. Uh, let's do some shout outs. So shout out to Petey Hanks, great guy. Um, he's been making Hanks for a while now. Straight out of Texas, cool guy, family man wife and kids uh, uh shout out to nate from lost dutchman now uh, this review is uh, the review of the finnegan is my most watched review with whaley well over 2000 uh views uh nate's from here in arizona he lives way out there though um but it is one of my favorite pieces that's why it's loaded right now it's what i've been using and yeah to I think I'm going to have to do a follow-up video on this piece because I've been using it uh, so much. Another of my favorite pieces, uh, this is the Minimalist card holder from Lesbian EDC. Um, this is Ortesia Pueblo, and I think this is Cognac Pueblo, and like with the mint uh, stitching. I think I'm going to get another one of these with different colors. I, I really enjoy this design. I really enjoy this type of leather. Uh, as you can see, it's been patinaed a lot. Way darker than, than in the review. Um, yeah, I also have the buck. Like a super uh, rare buck from the 90s. It's got a buck on it. Which is pretty cool, I think. Just running on the forest. And I've been on the forest a lot lately, so... I decided to pull this thing up. Um, yeah, I've been working on this cabin out and like deep in the woods. There's no signal up there. So it's kind of nice though because it resets your being because with no Instagram, no YouTube, no like ding, 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 ding on your phone all day long. Like it resets your humanity or your the man inside of you, I think. Uh, it's 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 been really nice. Also, my TM2. I'm gonna send this one out for review to uh, a friend of mine who wants to check a PM2 out. But today I'm gonna sharpen this uh, so she gets a really nice sharpened blade. But check it out. Tool carbon fiber, powder coated blue screws, titanium pocket clip. I mean, it's a pretty cool PM2. If I do say so myself. And Jaybirds. Jaybird Vistas. I have to go and like get a new pair. Uh, they're $200 though. So. You know. Oh and the Protex Print. 
Pro Take Sprint. Pretty sick. A little, you know, utility type of knife. Um, I've been enjoying it for, shit, almost a year. By the way, I do cuss on lives. Hey, Jade, how you doing? I was just talking about you. Hey, bro, I pay him to a suite. Yeah, I'm sending it out. I'll right after shopping it, uh, perhaps today or tomorrow when I ship it out. Because uh, I'm getting a new knife on Monday. Um, a Native Chief. Um, S30V Native Chief. Carlos, kill the way. Uh, Native Chief and S30V, just regular black handles. And I'm getting my Outlast back, so that should be my EDC, and I can send this one out now. And, uh, yeah. I haven't done a review of this thing. P I've never reviewed a PM2. I think there's, like, people know it's a great knife, so, um, I don't see why I should review it. But I think I'm doing, like, a, I'm gonna do a Seinfeld review. I don't know if you guys have ever watched the Comedians in Cars Drinking Coffee but at the beginning of the episode, he kind of does like an overview review of the vehicle that they drive. And it's pretty cool. I like it. And I think I want to do something like that. You know, get some sh some sick shots of the PM2 and, and do like a review like Jerry Seinfeld. Um, I have to write it out, though. And yeah. yeah, it's a lot of work, but it's fun. But I think we have enough people and we can do a... Um, unboxing uh, if you guys don't mind I'm gonna change the location of the phone boom so here's the package native chief looks amazing definitely need to pick one up yeah dude uh, oh nice no you were interested in a native chief yeah I wanted the crewer one not the crewer the Rex 45 one but I missed out on it um, so I'm just going to use a regular one and or maybe I'll sell it. I don't know because I do want one with a a more resilient type uh, metal. Not a big fan of S30V. Oh, nice. So nothing else in the packet. And this is probably for me to read in private. Um, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, Chief will be here Monday. Ooh, some swag. Little sticker. So this is from Lift Off Leather. I think there's a hamster or a cow inside. Can't really tell. But I love the sticker. Then another sticker. Awesome. I love them. But yeah, I'm going to read this one by myself later. So this is from Lift Off Leather on Instagram. Super cool guy. We've been talking ever since he started making leather stuff. And recently he was like, hey, you want to review some things? And I was like, sure thing. Uh, honestly, holy shit, this is nice. Uh, blacked out. Uh, he saw some of my uh, collection pieces. And he was like, you know what? I see that you like black, so I'm going to do some black for you. I'm like, okay, cool. So when you open this first flap... You have like a quick, um, a quick access to the back of it, which is really nice. I don't know what the leather is. So I don't know the price or the specs. Uh, I, I will have that out on the review. So first pocket, that's where I put in like my debit card or and cash that I would use more often, you know. And then boom, second pocket. This is probably for my ID, RFID card. And extra stuff, maybe credit card. Uh, but I, I freaking love the design. Uh, the materials, <clears throat> not. Um, I'm not familiar with this material, so yeah. Is that glued? That seems to be glued on together. Hmm. Yeah, the stitching is pretty even, and the design is pretty nice on this thing. Um, let's see if I can put a card in there. So how you guys have been? This uh, freaking what do you call it? Um, what do you call it? Quarantine? Not quarantine, but like shutdowns almost over. 
I'm excited to go back to a restaurant, to be honest. Yeah, I feel it's nice. It pulls out easy. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty nice. Okay, next piece. <clears throat> Different. I like this material a little bit more. It's like, uh, I don't know, waxed. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into the... Um, the materials more but see you have probably your ID here cash on the back and then debit card here uh, again the design is freaking aesthetic um, the color decisions are freaking nice thing all right ready to be done with <laughs> with it hey Jack how you doing so yeah, I'm just unboxing some some wallets it looks really nice it does look nice so it looks nice, and I the price is really competitive. Um, I mean, they're not on the level of finish as, like, a piece like this, where, like, you got candified edges. And these candified edges take a long time, and I, I really enjoy the look of them. Uh, personally, on Instagram, I like the feeling of them, too. Uh, so this takes, this uh, quality takes a little bit more, but they're also more money. Uh, so lift off leather um, it's not doing candy fight edges and you know the cuts are a little rough but that, I think that's part of the aesthetic of it it's like a rough you know construction worker you carry around a, a freaking buck this is a nice Instagram post right there uh, I will make one <laughs> good you I'm, I'm doing great I, I can't wait to go to a restaurant uh, my wife is is um, gonna have a procedure on Monday, so we're gonna be staying home together until um, she feels better. And um, but after that, I'm gonna take her out to a nice dinner, and it's gonna be nice. The white stitching pops, yeah, it really does. So it's more rustic, uh, nice model, great colors. It uh, it does look nice with the buck. I think that's going to be my Instagram post today, right there. The white stitch. Uh, I should update you on my wallet. You should update on me on your wallet. You should probably do a review of it, too. Uh, so, the card, you know, it's it's a little harder to put on this this side. But the, the wallets break in, you know. Leather breaks in. and So, all most of my wallets are pretty tight when I first get them. Um. Uh, this one's extremely tight. <laughs> Might need a different card. Best wish to your wife for the procedure. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, I don't think I've said it on the channel before, but you guys are, are tight. Well, you, you guys are tight, you know? We guys are tight. <laughs> the lives. Not a whole lot of people come in the live. A lot of people watch them after. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, hopefully she's everything goes out perfect and great and she recovers fast and she feels better and yeah, hopefully everything's good. The bug looks amazing with it. I know, right? Maybe an older knife too. I don't know what kind of knife this is. Santa Fe something. But yeah, left off leather approached me and he was like, Hey, you wanna review some stuff? And I was like, From you? Yeah. Sometimes I say no. Uh, a lot of the times I say no. Um, but when I do say yes, I let them know that I'm going to be honest and give my full, um, uh, review on it, uh, unbiased as possible. But yeah, people in the live are real ones. Ha. Huh? Yeah, they are, Jack. Uh, I mean, Bat Monkey has been one of like first 100 subs, uh, Jade too. And you, Jack, I mean, you're here. We're freaking... 10 minutes in and you're still watching I me. Mean, that's a that's a lot of time uh, to be watching a live. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to change the camera again. Camera angle. I know a lot of EDC enthusiasts never show their faces and they always keep the, the phone down or whatever, but... I, I go selfie mode, you know? I think it's fun. I, I, I want to look at people when I talk to them. And that way I can see their power level, you know. It's over 9,000. Just saw your Benchmate on Mild Matter DC. Holy crap, the review is out. I can't wait to watch it. That's awesome. 
yeah, he's a great guy. I reviewed his Manix uh, in Rex 45. Uh, so here I am. Hey, Rhino. Thanks, brother. Uh, I should probably take this off now. And uh, yeah, so the, the Benchmade outlet is, is coming back to me, which is nice because that's my working knife. Um, the, the things I have put that thing through are... You guys wouldn't believe it. I mean, it's a little pricey for a construction worker or whatever. You know, it's like 275 or whatever. But, I mean, you pay good money for good tools and you put them into work. And, and you care for them and hopefully they last you a really long time. But, yeah, I love that knife. The pry bar. I mean, I've taken baseboard out with that little pry bar. Because sometimes you have to take it out and you don't want to go back for a pry bar to your tool bag. Or maybe the, the, you have to go all the way back to the truck. You just pull out the blade. You cut the caulking. You get the pry bar and bam, you, you bust out the baseboard. And <laughs> you'd think it would break, but it doesn't. I mean, that option lock is pretty freaking strong. And, uh, yeah, the little saw is nice. I, I love the Outlast. It's, it's one of my keepers along with the PM2 and the Protex print. Like, other than that, I don't, you know, I, knives come in and out, but those three, they, they remain. Sup, thank you, Rhino. Appreciate you, brother. Hello, Carlos and everyone. Menes with a knife, how you doing, brother? Kamehameha, that's funny. <laughs> Have you guys seen the post of the guys who put a gun on their hand like that and they go Kamehameha? That's pretty funny. But yeah, I can't wait to review these two pieces. I'm thinking I'm going to do this piece first because it's so original. And I'm going to have to ask him how much he's selling these for. Um, you know, because the price is so important. So important when it comes to, to our view. Because some knives, you know, they'd be better knives if they weren't so expensive. And some knives, I think they're worth their, their, their asking price. For example, a Protex Sprint... This vanilla blade, vanilla handle version is only $125, and you get something that is just near perfect in quality. You get something made in California. You get a design that's just beautiful, very aesthetic. There's no problems with the knife. It's automatic. Uh, it's, just, it's just the perfect under two-inch knife, and you get it for $125. That's awesome. But then <clears throat> this freaking thing is $171 now for the vanilla version. I don't think that's that's a reasonable price for a PM2, guys. I don't. $171 for a vanilla PM2 is not reasonable. I said it. But I got this on the used market for really cheap and then I pimped it out. So, reasonable. The Alice is perfect work knife. Yes, for me it is. It totally is. Uh, gigantic primary blade three and a half inches and then that that pry bar I never used the the other tool other two tools because it has a seat belt cutter I've never used that and it has a window breaker I never used that but it's nice that I have it in my pocket like I just feel better that's in my pocket I'm not tactical or like super into prep stuff but but um I like having those things. So I'm going to full 1080p, and so like my signal apparently is not strong enough to stream 1080p. So if it's like freezing and stuff, I apologize. I'll go 720 if this doesn't look right to you guys. Um, you know, next next time I go live. I've been doing lives a lot more often now because there's people to hang out with on YouTube. Uh, before I had, you know, this many subs, you really couldn't go live because you'd be talking to yourself. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to review this one first. I don't know the name of it, but it's from Left Off Leather. And then I'm going to review this one. But I'm doing the Native Chief. That's going to be high priority, reviewing the Native Chief. My military clip is coming in today. Nice, Jade. I was lucky enough to get my lefty version last year on their 120 last year. Dude, Menace, congrats. But isn't it 171 for a vanilla version? Pretty sure. And then my doggie and she's barking outside.
think all of you have met Bella before, so I won't bring her up. Military clip. So yeah, Jade just has the military uh, in, which is awesome. Uh, it's a gigantic knife. That's why I want the Native Chief. Sometimes I want a bigger knife, and I know people have preferences for smaller knives. And look, if it's under three inches, I might as well super lightweight and super small and super cool and have the sprint. But if it's over that, if it's going to be a knife for EDC for like my daily use, I'm in Arizona, like the PM2 is going to be... Like, this doesn't scare people in Arizona, especially contractors. Like, I pull this out and I, I work with it. Nobody says anything. Uh, so I wanted something a little bit bigger, more useful. Um, yeah, and I think the Native Chief is going to be nice. Anyone else excited for the SKL? Yes, I am. Uh, 151. So let me show you guys. So I was camping up north, right? And I was using my PM2 as a cooking knife. And it works. But like for example, like on a big onion, you have to cut the onion like twice to get through the whole thing, get that ring. Or you have to rotate the onion. Like I just need another inch and it will cut the whole onion. Yes, Jack always, but I can only catch it when JB does it early. Me too, Rhino. I'm in Arizona. So by the time he goes live at night, like it's like 11 p.m. here and I'm an early bird. Uh, like I woke up at seven today and walked my dog and set up the live and you know it's eight eight forty seven now I've done a whole bunch of things, <laughs> but uh, yeah it, when it happens at eleven I pop in I say hi, and then I say good night on a job site almost anywhere nobody would say a word no, yeah yeah no but I'll I'll pull this out with friends uh, or whatever like somebody always needs a knife. And nobody says anything about the PM2 size. So, you know, and, and sometimes I do need an extra inch at work or whatever. And I like bigger knives. The Outlast is gigantic. And it's one of my favorite knives. I have to say up to 12, but it's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. But of course, you know, but it, I'm an early bird type of guy. So this is Left Off Leather's uh, Instagram page. He's a, he's a pretty cool guy. I think we've been talking ever since he started his uh, leather thing, but says making small handcrafted leather goods. Father, twenty years old. Wow, he's young. Ohio leather knives. But yeah, pretty cool guy. I think I really like that hat and that patch. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to buy one of those patches from him. I'm in France. So it's too early in the morning for me. Yeah. Damn. Wow. Wow. France, that's cool. How are knife laws in France? Are they like not good? This is my pocket knife, my pocket dump for the woods, guys. So I have like a GPS watch, uh, multi tool, big flashlight, my Lost Dutchman leather, and my PM2. The only thing that would change from that, uh, had I been more prepared, is a fixed blade knife for the woods or the native chief. Ah, oh, for the woods. But the PM2 just works well. It does everything I needed to do. I did all the cooking up there with the PM2. I definitely like a longer knife for food prep. Yeah, it's nice. His leather goods seem pretty cool. They do seem pretty cool. Um, I will review them soon. I have two pieces, which is nice to have two pieces. Because then you know the maker better. Like for Stephanie, I have two pieces. And from Lost Dutchman Leather, I have two pieces. And you just... You just know their style, their craft, their quality better when you have more than one piece. Living College Town just bought Native 5 because of lower fear factor. The Native 5 is such a good knife though. I reviewed the lightweight version and I love that thing. And that inspired me to buy the Native Chief because I want a little bit more blade. Uh, and the Shaman's kind of expensive. Yeah, like it's a lot of money for a shaman. Uh, I am still might get one on the used market someday, but for right now I, I I don't see myself buying a shaman. I really like variety with knives, so I like a range. Uh, me too. You know, I got under two inches. I got three inches. I got whatever this is. And I got whatever a buck is. I saw a lot of elk up there this weekend. We saw like eight. 
which was pretty cool. It was kind of dark, so we couldn't tell if they were bull elk or not. Nothing is legal carry unless you have a good reason. Fishing, hunting, and work. <clears throat> Fishing, hunting, and work is a good reason. Um, honestly, I have no reason most of the time. Like, I, I will run with this knife. I'll, I'll run a 5K or 10 miles or whatever with a knife. I have no use for it. I have no need for it. I'm not cutting anything out there. Um, but I'm just an enthusiast. So therefore, I carry one with me. And then I'll do a pocket dump when I'm done with the run. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it's Arizona. It's different. Can't collect anything, but can't carry them. Ridiculous. Hmm. If the MXG clips create a hotspot, try tip down. It works better for me. On what knife, Menace? I missed it. Oh, okay. For the for the military. The animals are finally starting to come alive here. That's awesome. That's crazy rhino. <laughs> I want to try the native chafe. Uh-huh. The Jojumbo and still wanting on the PM2 Tanto. So I am very interested on the Jojumbo. But I've never had a like a straight blade like that, a Warncliff blade like that. I've never used one. Uh, for work, obviously, you have those little blades. But uh, I don't want to spend the money on something experimental like that. My first particle was the Resilience. I still love that knife. Uh, that and my SSS Police. That SSS Police, those are cool. And the Resilience are cool too, Bo. Uh, you should get the belt clip knife. Rhino. The native five. I carry sax, but technically they are illegal too. Wow, sax too. Yeah, I guess it's a knife with a blade. But that's more worky. You know, if you have a multi-tool, that's more worky. So you can be like, you know, I'm just doing stuff around the house. I don't know. But I go tip down carry on the PM2. Tip down. Left-handed. Hmm. I can't even try it with these scales, Menace. It only has um, right carry uh, tip up. So, yeah. It, but the scales are cleaner, you know, no holes. Let's see what other picture that I prompt. Uh, you guys want to see uh, a big old snake? Get back, then. Oh, it's not a rattler. I think it's a bull snake. But we wrestled that thing. Oh, dude, he's right. We didn't kill it. We, uh, we, that's why we were wrestling. Because we just wanted to grab it nicely with the thing. And just throw it, throw it like out in the wild. Away from this guy's house. <laughs> but it was... It, bull snakes are different. Because uh, we've wrestle different snakes even rattlers and rattles don't don't fight you that much you know they get tired and then they're done they're like take me wherever or kill me but bull snakes holy shit they're aggressive and they're not venomous but they have they do bite and they have so much bad bacteria on their mouth that it's a bad bite so we were really careful with that i really like this tiny thing i don't even know what it is Somebody gave me a box with old knives. Santa Fe Stoneworks. Camillus, New York, USA. Wow, okay. That's cool. Won't focus. Um, snakes are awesome. <laughs> I noticed before, lefty don't have as many options. No, they don't, man. Um, sorry. No. My, uh, growing up, my uncle was left-handed, and he was, you know, his mom died early, so he, we grew up kind of being, like, him being my older brother, because we hang out so much. He was older than me, and he was left-handed, and he struggled so much more with life. It was not even funny, like, what, huh? Everything was a struggle for him, and he didn't, never complained, he never said anything, uh, but just watching him for, like, so long and just closely writing drawing everything was a, a, a struggle but I feel for you guys 
I bought a knife kind of like that in AC. Paid way too much. Haha. <laughs> yeah, it's got those little blue things. So, yeah, I bet it's expensive. This is real wood and real jade stone, guys. This is, yeah, this, sh this should have been expensive. So, the turquoise looks awesome on that knife. Yeah, and it's real, real stone, dude. Somebody really cut that. Somebody really cut that wood in those pieces of stone. And I and I just leave it in my office to cut boxes down, not open. Because sometimes I forget. Like, I walk around in shorts in my house, so I forget to carry a knife. So I just leave that right there to open boxes. Um, yeah. I'm lucky nothing dangerous here. Yeah, I mean, people. <laughs> uh, but bull snakes are not... They're not that dangerous, and they will kill other snakes. I live in a ranch in Texas, so I carry around a machete because we have a lot of rattlesnakes as well as bull. That's that's cool. Just a machete, yeah, I guess that would do it. But if you're in concrete, you'd fuck up your machete. So a lot of the times here in Arizona, we use a shovel if we if we want to kill the snake. We didn't want to kill this bull snake. It was beautiful, and it was, you know, it's a nice snake. So we just wrestled it and threw it away uh, we drove down a quarter mile and just threw it like there's so much wilderness in arizona like once you get out of phoenix uh, like everything is just freaking desert so who's here let's see yes it looks sweet or whatever type of stone it is uh morning carlos morning susan how you doing hope you're doing well um yeah my morning's been nice so far gotta eat though I'm the same way. I have knives stashed everywhere. That's funny. Farmland, but ones here are aggressive. Yeah. So do do you all of them, or do you guys drive them out somewhere? Uh, rattlers, we almost always kill because they're so dangerous. So dangerous. I mean, they will mess you up. They will mess up any part of your body because the venom kind of just eats away and decays your ears. You look, basically a bite will start to look like a piece of zombie skin or zombie muscle and like it will go all the way down to the bone and decay your bone um so rattlers really bad i mean they're part of the ecosystem and all so we don't go out of our way but like if they're in a home with kids and stuff like that yeah yeah people are the worst everywhere <laughs> that's funny right now should my CT0460 and pre-order a whole grid or mini RSK? Awesome. Uh, I think I'm going to review a full-size RSK. Uh, I, again, I'm a big knife guy. Rattlesnakes, I uh, kill, but bull are good for the mice. Yeah, I mean, they're so aggressive too, man. I, I never wrestled a bull snake before. And yeah, it fought us for twice as long as any other snake had ever fought us. Like uh, a king snake, they're black and white and they just eat snakes. I think that's why they're called king snakes. But those who just catch them and they get tired real quick and, and then you just grab it and you toss it. Um, you know, because they scare kids anyway and they're not dangerous for people, but you still toss them, you know, away from the house. Uh, but the bull snakes fight you hard. Um, but I can probably miss remembering where I have stashed them. That's funny. I just received a new Hogue Doug Ritter Mini RSK. It is the sharpest knife I have ever got out of the box. Almost mirrored edge. People said the same. You got to check it out. Yeah, so Hogue does like a three-stage sharpening. I think Benchmade is two-stage. So they'll go on the belt. And then they'll strap it. But it's also a, a little belt. So it's two-stage. Most people like spider go do one stage, but Hogue is doing three stage, where they they get the um, micro bevel on, then they go medium and then they strap it. And I think they strap it by hand. I'm not sure about that, but I know for a fact that they're three stage uh, sharpening, and I think so is Protec. But honestly, Protec, um, this one did not come that sharp. I've had spider goes come way sharper than this Protec. Uh, especially that Mannix that I reviewed from my boy, Mild Manor DDC. That Mannix was super sharp. It was in Rex 45 though, so I don't know if the metal had something to do with it, but it was the sharpest knife out of Spyderco I had ever uh, reviewed. 
or used or tried. It was just a laser. And my old man had used it before he sent it to me. So it was a, a used and reviewed knife before I got it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, I want to review the RSK and the DECA. And I have a buddy that would let me borrow it, but I don't want to ask. But Monkey, if only I could find some of the great knives that are hiding. That's funny. Fifth, a lot at Rhino 54, I'm always finding uh, a knife I forgot about. That's funny. Rattlesnakes are bad for the other animals because they could try and eat the chicken. So I kill them even if they aren't um, bothering anything. Just trying to decrease population. I didn't know that. Yeah, the, yeah, we just take them out too. Just for, for, for kids. Like here in Arizona, you, like there's a lot of homes out in the desert. A lot of homes. Most of the homes I work on are out in the desert. And like you'll find rattlesnakes in like a normal house, you know. And they'll have kids. They'll have little ones. They don't know any better. They might want to play with it or something. So if, if it has a rattler, it's gone. Yes, my protect thanks to your EDC video did not come out that sharp, right? But it sharpens out quick because it's only two inches. I have like a semi mirrored edge right now because it was a mirrored edge, but I've been using it. It's it's sharp now, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I might touch it up today because I'm gonna sharpen the PM2. Dun 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 dun. I think we're gonna call it at like 40 minutes because I gotta eat. But yeah, that's for it was a box opening. Uh, you know, I'm gonna review knives more. Uh, but yeah, Native Chief is coming in. That's good. Outlast is coming back in. PM2 is coming out. I'm disappointed. Is saw almost no animals when I was in AC. Hmm. Dude, I saw eight elk over the weekend. Not weekend, uh, Thursday, Friday, I was working at this cabin. Eight elk. Yeah. Just driving up to this little rim up in Coconino. Eight. I'd never seen that many. Ever. Um, but this place apparently is just swarming with elk. Later, we'll check the rest out as it time to eat lunch. Hey, nice. Yeah, I'll have to eat pretty soon here too. My wife woke up recently. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of wild animals here. Big old lizards, snakes everywhere. It's just a wild uh, a place. I didn't take that many pictures this time around. Out in the forest. Because I had already been out there. So, I saw some of the old photos when I was up there. Um, like I took pictures of some elk here. But you can't see them. The the freaking wide lens is so wide that it looks like it's so far, but they were so close to us. They're here somewhere on this picture. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can't zoom in enough. Sorry. I went to Bear, Arizona. thought so. That was fun. Wow, I want to go there, too. I haven't. It's kind of expensive. Later, Menace. Have a good day, man. Have a good weekend. Uh, blessings. Blessings with knives. I only saw elk and crows at the Grand Canyon. I've only seen deer at the Grand Canyon. Like little tiny baby uh, deer. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I closed the app. But over in Grand Canyon, because they don't get hunted, because it's a park that, you know, you don't hunt at, and it's a gigantic park. They're not that scared of humans. Like, we, I could have, it was like a drive, they, they were on the road, and they were just eating, and like, we were just driving by, and like, you could almost reach out and pet a deer out in the Grand Canyon. And I, it only happened once. The first time I took my wife there, um... So one day she just, we were talking about the Grand Canyon. She's like, I'd never been. And I was like, what? So that weekend, I heard that on like Wednesday or, or Friday or something like that. That weekend, that Saturday, we were, we, we just drove to the Grand Canyon. And we stayed uh, at the Grand Canyon Park. Uh, and we had a great night. 
it was it was pretty awesome to have seen deer that close by on her first time going to the Grand Canyon. We were so perplexed we didn't even take pictures. I don't think. Um, but I think we're gonna call it too. I appreciate everybody who came in and 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 and, and viewed my channel. I uh, appreciate the growth. I appreciate the subs. Appreciate the likes. I appreciate all of you. Uh, you know, God bless and Godspeed. I forgot how to turn this off.